Hello. In this video, we are going to extend our discussion of the SEPR theory to central atoms, including d orbitals. Our first example is phosphorus pentafluoride. Each fluorine atom has seven valence electrons. Phosphorus, being in the same family as nitrogen, has five valence electrons, therefore giving us a total of 40 valence electrons. We get the Lewis dot structure as shown on the screen. We can satisfy the octet rule for each of the fluorine atoms, shown with the orange circles. And not only can we satisfy the octet rule for phosphorus, we can exceed it. We see that inside this blue circle, there are 10 electrons. This, we are allowed to expand the octet, go beyond eight electrons on the central atom when we are in the third row or below on the periodic table. Around the central phosphorus atom, we have five electron bonding pairs, which gives us five electron domains for phosphorus pentachloride. These are shown surrounded with the red circles. The optimal way of reducing electron electron repulsion among these electron domains when we have five domains is the trigonal bipyramid structure shown in the figure. Notice that along the waist, we have the three equatorial phosphorus atoms that form a triangle. And then we have a linear uh, path from fluorine to the central phosphorus to the bottom fluorine. And this is the axial direction. Along the axial direction, we have 180 degree angles. And along the equatorial plane, we have 120 degree This gives us DSP3 hybridization. If we add 1D, 1S, and 3Ps, this gives us a total of five orbitals, which is, uh, corresponds to the five electron domains around the central phosphorus atom. Our next compound is sulfur tetrafluoride. Each fluorine has seven valence electrons. Sulfur, being in the same family as oxygen, has six. So that gives us a total of 34 valence electrons for the molecule. And we can allocate them as shown on the screen. We can satisfy the octet rule for each fluorine shown with the orange circles. And we can expand the octet to 10 electrons for the central sulfur atom, which is permissible because sulfur is in the third row of the periodic table. If we are in the first or second rows of the periodic table, we can never exceed eight electrons, we can never expand the octet beyond the octet rule. This gives us a total of five electron pairs around the central sulfur atom, four of which are bonding pairs involved in the bonding with fluorine, and one of which, which is a lone pair entirely on sulfur. So this gives us the five electron domains shown in the red circles on the screen. This gives us the so-called seesaw structure, which is like trigonal bipyramid, but one of the equatorial positions has been replaced by a lone pair. Note that if we change the central atom and the fluorine, the halogen atoms, that we get a more or less distorted version of a seesaw. Since there are five electron domains, this is, gives us DSP3 hybridization on the central sulfur atom. D plus S plus three Ps gives us five orbitals, which corresponds to the 
five electron domain. Our next example is ICL3 iodine trichloride. Iodine and chlorine are both halogens, so they each have seven valence electrons, giving us a total of 28 valence electrons for this molecule. We can form a valid Lewis structure as seen on this screen. We can satisfy the octet rule for the external chlorine atoms. These are shown with the green circles. And we can expand the octet for iodine, the central atom, which is valid because iodine is beyond, is in the third row or beyond of the periodic table. Its electrons are shown in a purple circle. Iodine has five electron pairs surrounding it. Three are bonding pairs involved in iodine chlorine single bonds, and there are two lone pairs which are attached directly just to the iodine, thereby giving five electron domains, which are each encircled in red on the screen. Five electron domains with two lone pairs gives us the T shaped structure shown here. Note that this is the structure for iodine trichloride in the gas phase, and it has a different, more complicated structure in liquid or solid phase. I pity the fool that doesn't remember that ICL3 has a T-shaped structure in that it is DSP3 hybridized at the central iodine atom. Next, we have I3-1, the so-called triiodide ion. Each iodine has seven valence electrons. And then the ion has an additional minus one charge, so thereby giving us a total of 22 valence electrons. And we can allocate them as shown on the screen. Note in this molecule that the outer iodines satisfy the octet rule, and we see the purple circles enclosing eight electrons for those, while the central iodine atom has a total of 10 electrons. Therefore, it is expanding the octet. So we see in one molecule, we have the same element, both satisfying the octet rule and expanding the octet at the same time. The central iodine atom has a total of five electron pairs around it. Three of them, two of them, I'm sorry, are bonding pairs to the external iodine, and it has a total of three lone pairs. Therefore, it gives a total of five electron pairs, five electron domains, each highlighted with a red circle on the screen. A total of five electron domains, three of them being lone pairs, gives us a linear structure. It's equivalent to the axial uh, position on trigonal bipyramid with each of the equatorial positions replaced by a lone pair. Because the central iodine atom is has five um, electron domains, it is DSP3 hybridized. D plus S plus three P's equals five, corresponding to the five electron domains. Next, we have sulfur hexafluoride, SF6. Each fluorine atom has seven valence electrons. The central sulfur atom has six valence electrons. 
thereby giving a total of 48 valence electrons for this molecule. If we form the structure as shown on the screen, we see that each fluorine satisfies the octet rule, and that's shown in the series of orange circles, and that sulfur expands the octet with a total of 12 electrons. And this is shown in the yellow circle, which is valid because sulfur is in the third row of the periodic table, so it can therefore expand the octet. The central sulfur atom has a total of six bonding pairs surrounding it, therefore it has six electron domains shown in the red circle. Six electron domains, all bonding pairs, gives us the octahedral shape as shown on the screen, where the fluorine sulfur fluorine angles will either either 90 or 180 degrees. Six electron domains on the central sulfur atom give us D2SP3 hybridization. 2Ds, 1S, and 3P give us a total of six electron domains. ICL5, iodine pentachloride, has, as we see, 42 valence electrons. Chlorine and iodine being both halogens, each have seven valence electrons. Iodine being larger is going to be our central atom. We satisfy the octet rule for each chlorine atom shown in the green circles. We expand the octet for iodine as we see it has a total of 12 electrons within its uh, purple circle. It is valid to expand the octet for iodine because it is in the third or past row of the periodic table. The central iodine atom is surrounded by six electron pairs, five of which are bonding pairs to chlorine and one of which is a lone pair, thereby giving six electron domains circled in red. Six electron domains, one of which is a lone pair, gives us the square pyramidal shape shown on the screen. It is like octahedral if one of the positions is replaced by a lone pair. Because the central iodine atom is surrounded by six electron domains, it is therefore D2SP3 hybridized. 2Ds plus 1S plus 3Ps gives us 6, which equals the number of electron domains around the central iodine atom. Next, we have ICL4 minus the iodine tetrachloride anion. Each iodine and chlorine atom has seven valence electrons. And then because the ion has a minus one charge, there is one additional, giving us a total of 36 valence electrons that we have to allocate according to the lewis langmuir rules. If we allocate the electrons as shown, we can satisfy the octet rule for each of the four chlorine atoms, and we expand the octet for the central iodine. The chlorine electrons are shown in green circles and the iodine electrons are shown in a purple circle. Iodine being the largest atom here, it's going to be in the center and we see that it is surrounded by six electron pairs, four of which are bonding pairs 
and two of which are lone pairs, which are a little bit difficult to see. They're north, east, and northwest of the iodine atom in this drawing. We see that we have a total of six electron domains, each circled in red. For uh, bonding pairs and two lone pairs gives us the square planar arrangement. It is equivalent to the octahedral if we removed uh, two of the positions that are 180 degrees away from each other. The central iodine atom having six electron domains it is therefore D2SB3 hybridized. For our final compound, we have ICL7, iodine heptachloride. Each chlorine or iodine atom having seven valence electrons gives us a total of 56 valence electrons for this molecule. And we can make a valid Lewis structure as shown on the screen. You will note that as, once you begin to expand the octet around the central atom, it becomes more and more cumbersome to draw the dots and it becomes more and more difficult to see where the electrons are clearly. Each chlorine atom satisfies the octet rule, which we see within each green circle. And we see that we can expand the octet, in fact, we have to expand the octet for iodine for a total of 14 electrons inside the purple circle. Around the central iodine atom, we have seven electron pairs, each of which is a bonding pair forming a single bond between the central iodine, and a chlorine atom. So therefore, there are a total of seven electron domains around the central iodine atom in ICL7. For seven electron domains, all of which are bonding, we end up having the so-called pentagonal bipyramid structure shown on the screen. Since the central iodine atom has seven electron domains, it is therefore D3SP3 hybridized. Three Ds plus one S plus three Ps equals seven. I thank you very much for your kind attention. Stay safe. And as always, have a good one.